Hello, welcome to my channel. A lot of people have been requesting me to do a review or talk about my little coffee machine at home, which is the Delonghi Dedicate Deluxe. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how I brew my coffee on here with the tools that it came with and also the upgrades I did with the machine to produce quite surprising results. I personally had it since 2017 or 18, I can't really remember. I was back in uni and I went out for coffee quite often and I just really wanted to save money at that time and I got myself a little coffee machine. It's been around with me for five years now. I honestly like it a lot and it hasn't broken down. I've been maintaining it really well. The only thing I needed to fix was probably the leaking gasket inside, which you can get a replacement quite easily online. I got it in the white colorway, which I personally like white stuff in general. It just looks clean. And also, it doesn't look like it's used very long at all. It has a matte finish. I don't think it looks cheap. It doesn't have any scratches on it either. And it's very easy to clean. It goes really well with my kitchen, which is primarily white and I don't know, what's it called? Sage. This machine has a 15 bar pressure. It has a single boiler. And what that means is you can't make coffee and steam milk at the same time. After it brews espresso, you kind of have to wait a bit and then turn on the steam one, let it heat up or cool down. Overall, it's very compact. It's perfect for a studio or a small kitchen. I remember having it in my student accommodation and it didn't take up much space. The machine has a one liter water tank. I don't drink espresso that often, so I only need to refill it once or twice during the week. It only takes around 10 seconds for it to start up. You can pretty much turn it on, get your beans ground, and it will be ready to make coffee. The buttons on the machine are extremely straightforward. You've got two programmable dosage buttons and a steam button. Both dosage buttons have pre-infusion settings programmed in and are not adjustable. Brew time and temperature are programmable. You can't program a specific temperature, but you can choose from low, medium, or high. The machine also has a descaling alert, which is whenever the steam button starts flashing red. Since it has a single boiler, you won't be able to make coffee and steam milk at the same time. If you wanted to, for example, make two cups of espresso, you'll need to let some water out to cool down the boiler after you brew the first cup. When there are flashing buttons like this, it either means the machine is getting ready or you need to release water from the steam wand to cool down the boiler. You'll be able to operate the machine after the buttons turn solid. When I turn on the machine in the morning, I prepare my beans while I wait for my coffee machine to warm up. If you're curious about what other equipment I use at home, here I've got a time more scale. I've also got a Nice Zero as my grinder. I've given up hand grinding for a while now, and to be honest, the grinder was a life-changing purchase. The machine has two drip trays which hold cups up to 12 centimeters tall. Instead of tall cups, I usually place a shot glass or a cup underneath. As you can see here, I can fit both my large and small scales underneath. The tray on the bottom isn't designed for you to have a scale on, so if you use a small scale, it wouldn't be level. That's why I use my large scale if I use the tray on the bottom. I usually preheat my cup before brewing my coffee. I prefer using the group head to preheat because water from the steam wand comes out very slow. The machine comes with two pressurized baskets, one for single dose and the other for double dose. They fit around 6 to 12 grams of coffee, which are smaller than the baskets we use in cafes. A pressurized basket artificially creates more pressure, so it allows more leeway if you don't have the perfect grind size. 
For example, the espresso will still have a nice crema even if you've ground your coffee coarser than normal. The downside is that it won't be a real crema even though it looks completely fine, it'll still affect the body and the taste of the espresso. Back in the days when I didn't know what the difference between these two baskets were, I asked shops to grind the coffee for me and every time I tried to brew coffee with the pressurized basket, it would always choke or over extract. If your espresso takes a very long time to extract, the solution is to grind your coffee coarser than the usual grind size for espresso. After adjusting the grind size, it feels like fine sea salt, which I'll probably under extract my espresso if I was using my unpressurized basket. I'm going to dial in and see if this grind size works for my pressurized basket. I'm going to use a double dose basket and weigh out around 12 grams of ground coffee because I don't want to overdose the basket. I tamped the coffee with the plastic tamper that the machine came with so I can demonstrate what the espresso looks like without upgrading any tools. I'm going to aim for a 30 gram shot at 30 seconds. From here, you can already see signs of overextracting, so I'll wait and see how long it takes to brew around 30 grams of espresso, and then I'll adjust the grind size a bit. Although it's clearly overextracted, the color of the crema is quite light, and the espresso has a thin body. I've adjusted the grind size again, and it definitely feels a lot coarser, and let's give it another try. The shot ran relatively fast and is definitely under extracted. If I gave it another go and made the grind size a bit finer, the shot will probably come out just right. Now I'm going to demonstrate how latte art looks like in shots extracted from a pressurized basket. For the under extracted shot, the surface feels very rigid and the milk isn't mixing well. I also poured in the wrong direction of the cup. The tulip looked alright, but not very really round. I've definitely noticed that this looks like something I poured back in the days when I was probably using under-extracted espressos to practice. Now let's try the over-extracted shot. The results were better than I expected, and I would say you can definitely be able to pour latte art without changing the porta filter, but I can't guarantee the taste. The pour was very smooth and the tulip looks nice, but the contrast isn't great. The coffee also looks a bit lighter than usual. Now onto the upgrades and modifications. I eventually moved on from a pressurized basket because I used to grind my coffee with the EK43 at the cafe I used to work at. As I mentioned before, the pressurized basket needs a coarser grind size. I got fed up with the machine choking on the fine grind, so I bought a naked porta filter which has a non-pressurized basket. I did a taste comparison with the coffee I used to work with between this machine and a Linea PB. It didn't taste much different and I could taste all the notes. The only annoying part about making espresso with this porta filter is that it doesn't 100% lock onto the group head. So sometimes if I'm experiencing a little bit more pressure, I do need to hold on to it while it's extracting coffee. It is a 51mm portafilter, so it's not going to fit 18 grams of coffee like a 58mm portafilter. I usually just fit 15 grams of coffee, it still produces a very nice espresso, and all you need to do is just play around with the recipe. I also got this because I'm a big sucker for naked porta filters in general. I do like to see if my shots channel or not. I was using old beans for this shot, so the crema is obviously not going to be super thick, but the body is denser and the color is darker than the one that I made with the pressurized porta filter. Here comes one of the most important parts of the machine the steam wand. 
The machine did come with an automatic steam wand. It had a milk mode and a cappuccino mode. You can remove the outer sleeve to use the rubber steam wand as a single hole steam wand. However, since the machine wasn't exactly designed to have the sleeve removed, the rubber part sometimes gets blown off and creates a big mess. So before I modify the machine, I tried to tie a cloth to secure the rubber steam wand. Or you could use a cable tie as well. As the rubber got old, it did loosen up over time. It blew up so often that I got sick of it and replaced it with the Ranchillo Silvia Steam Wand. I did post a video about how I modified my Steam Wand. It wasn't that complicated, but it did take some time. I would say the upgrade was 100% worth it because now I can do advanced patterns at home. The steam wand is generally very weak and slow in steaming milk, so it does require more patience if you use commercial coffee machines before. I've managed to pour some pretty cool patterns with this machine, so I'd say learning latte art with this is possible. But latte art comes with a lot of practice, and a coffee machine won't magically make the technique any easier for you. You have to understand how milk and espresso works when you pour. Here you can see the coffee is a bit darker than the previous shots that I poured with. The surface wasn't rigid and pouring was very smooth. Here's a comparison of the three shots that I poured with. Out of the three, the right one has the best contrast. And overall, I would say that this machine's very worth recommending. So I would recommend this machine to people who have a small kitchen or don't have a lot of space at home, who's also trying to get into coffee but don't want a 500 pound coffee machine. A lot of my friends do have machines that's been to cup, which I do not recommend because it's first of all, it's hard to clean. And then I don't like my coffee staying in the hopper um, over a long time. The burrs inside the grinder also aren't good enough for you to grind fine enough coffee for espresso. So a lot of friends who had problems with the machine that it ran too fast, which is one of the issues with being to cup. So that's why I have a separate grinder for my coffee machine. And I think it works very really well. And for now, I wouldn't want to upgrade to anything bigger because I don't have a big enough kitchen to fit a, a commercial one group machine. Another thing that people ask me about is latte art, which I won't say that it will guarantee you to learn how to pour a tulip because that's just not how latte art works. It comes with a lot of practice and a lot of knowledge to understand how latte art works. The machines, I think around 160 pounds when I bought it. This machine works completely fine without the upgrades if you don't wanna do it. Um, but I would personally recommend you try to upgrade at least the porta filter. The porta filter that I bought was around 30 pounds, I think, and the steam one was about 12 pounds plus time. That would be like a 15 pound upgrade. If you don't drink milk coffee, I think it's fine to leave the steam one as it is. I also don't like silver coffee machines. That's one of the reasons that I didn't get the Sage coffee machine. I just really liked the white one, which looks quite cute. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, and comment.